Hallelujah. Come on, let's go.
morning, and um, Brother Michael is going to come and share. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Well, good morning to all you glorious saints of God, the bearers of light and love to the world. God bless you. Welcome by Facebook. We're going to ask you now, Facebook people, gather some bread and, or and some uh, juice or water, crackers, whatever you got. We're about to enter into um, the Lord's Communion. So get ready for that. We're going to be doing that right now. Uh, Handsome Jamie, would you hit uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 in the King James as opposed to the, I said New King James, but this time I really mean it, King James. Right. <laughs> so, um, so what are we going to do? I guess when you're ready, come on up. How do we do it from the back, right? We do it from the yeah. back. Yes. And then while I'm while I'm uh, doing this, that way we save a little time. We've got a lot going on this morning. Yeah. So why don't we all stand now and then we'll gather the elements and then we'll sit down and then we'll and then we'll probably stand up again. I don't know where we <laughs> Man, you got to be in shape to be in this church, I'll tell you what. You got, to, you got to be in shape to play the music, I'll tell you that, man. These guys wear me out. So let's let's uh uh, if you have your Bibles, especially by Facebook, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. There's my little Bible out. Okay. So you know, you all know the story, and uh, this is the verse that's commonly read. And that is when uh, the Apostle Paul is talking about when Jesus himself gave him this revelation of the Lord's Supper. But I want to focus, thank you, sir. I want to focus your attention on the last part of that. We'll go back, but verse 26 says, For as often... As you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye proclaim, or actually in King James, you show, right? I like that word. Show the Lord's death until he come. So when you gather your uh, juice and uh, cracker, you may be seated. This is just going to be a minute and then we'll stand up and we'll take it together. You can be seated whenever uh, you get your your uh, elements. Did everybody get up here? You got yours up here? Okay. Everybody good? Okay, and I hope you're ready by Facebook. Okay, so I want to focus your attention, and this is kind of what the Apostle Paul focused on. I thought it was very inter very interesting. He said, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim or you show. So it's not, you can be seated, guys. You can be seated. And uh, we'll stand up in a minute. We'll take it together. Just hold on. Hold tight. Don't drink it yet. Don't eat it yet. Uh, even if you're hungry, don't, don't. Just hang on. Avoid the temptation. So as often as you eat this bread, you show. You are demonstrating the death. So I thought, you know, it was actually a few years ago. I was in Mexico. I happened to be there. I was looking for a grave of someone who had just been murdered, probably by the cartel. But I was going to go, and, and I've done this before, by the way. But I went down there to find out who did it. And I was going to go confront them with the gospel. I've done that before, but I went down there maybe eight, nine years ago. And I happened to be there on November 1st, which is what? The other was Muertos, right? But I didn't realize it was. And I don't know if you've ever been to a celebration like that. We don't really celebrate that. Uh, but Mexican Catholics, if you're Catholic, you probably have, you know, celebrated that. Some people in our family actually celebrate that. But I was there November 1st. It was an ordeal, man. I mean, it was a whole event. It was it was mariachis, mariachis. It was pan dulce. It was tamales. It was unreal to me. It was like a big old fiesta party on this day that I went, I went there to go look for a grave, but this, it, I didn't realize it was November 1st. So what they do, if you, if you know the history of the culture, you probably have family members that do, you go and you kind of fellowship with, with you know, the dead, the people that have gone on, and it's someone that you love, usually a parent, grandparent, loved one, tío, tía, something like that. So you go, and, you, and it's not a sad thing, it's a very celebratory thing, right? It's a, it's a fiesta almost, and uh, I was amazed by it. I, I've never seen anything like that. Just walled up, I mean, just from far as I can see, parties going on, balloons and everything. And so I said, well, what is the difference between what we do? Because, you know, they do that in remembrance of those people, right. right? They do that in remembrance of them, right? To remember them, to fellowship with them. We don't do that because we don't fellowship with the dead. But they do that. And I thought, Lord, what is the difference between what we do in the Lord's Supper and what these people do in the in their, you know, their celebration, their Dia de los Muertos? And the Lord, I, I was thinking about this all day long yesterday, and I realized one thing, uh, really two things. There's, it's, it's the same in one way, but it's completely different in another way. It's the same in that we do celebrate the death. 
It, is, it doesn't say we're celebrating the life of Jesus. It says specifically, we show forth the death. We are proclaiming and showing forth the death. Why is that important? Why not, why not the resurrection? Why not his life? Why not his power? No, specifically his death. So in that way, it's the same in that you're you're going there and you're showing forth, you're, you're actually demonstrating and celebrating the life, but also remembering the death. So it's the same in that way, but here's how it's different. The Lord showed me all, all day yesterday when the pastor asked me to, to do this. It's different in that everything that, that those people have done, your loved ones, your DI, your DO, your mother, your father, your grandparents, everything that they've ever done, that they ever did for you, they're never going to be able to, to do that again, right? That, it's, that's gone. The other day, when there was ice on the road, my uh, my father-in-law, man of God, he calls my wife and he says, uh, uh, you know, when you, when you drive, you know, it's icy. Be careful because, you know, it's full slippery. And she goes, Dad, I'm with Michael. That Michael's from Dallas. He knows how to drive at ice. He didn't worry about that. But, you know, I told her, you need to cherish that. Yeah, right. Cherish that because your dad, he might not always, he, he right. might be here longer than everybody, but... He might not, you know, he's in his almost right. almost 80s. Yes. Man, and those of us that have lost our parents, man, we love them. We miss them. I miss the prayers. I miss the love. Every time I would walk into a room, my dad, he would always say, hello, Chulu. Hi, Chulu. Man, I miss that. I miss that. So everything that they yes, did, though, as much as we love them and cherish them and honor them and thank God for them, yes, we're never going to hear that again. Not on earth. In heaven, we will. So in that way, it's different. But here, how, I mean, that way it's the same in that we celebrate them, but it's different in that everything they did, it's over. Yeah. Everything Jesus did is continuing. Yeah. His death and resurrection continue. The power of God and what he did on the cross yeah. remains That's right. and is developing, is flowing as long as you allow it to in your life. So here's why the death is important. And the Bible says that some of us are sick and weak and even die because we don't understand this principle. Here's the principle. The principle is appropriation. Okay. Just another minute or two, I'll, I'll close. Appropriation means, you've, you've heard the word, especially you young people, it's a bad thing in this world, right? She's appropriating this culture. This person is appropriating that. White people are appropriating black culture. Black people are appropriating white culture. Everybody's appropriating the Mexican culture. You know, in other words, you're taking what belongs to someone else and taking it upon yourself. The other day, Whoopi Goldberg, whose real name is Karen Johnson, <laughs> she said, you know, she said something really dumb about the Holocaust. She apologized, right? right? right. But then it comes out that her last, you know, that's not her real name, Whoopi Goldberg. Goldberg is a Jewish name, right? And she said, I saw an article, she said that she took the name as a stage name, that's not her real name, Whoopi Goldberg as a Jewish name. She knew it was a Jewish name because she wanted to get more auditions, right? She wanted to get more auditions. So people see, oh, Goldberg, oh, it's a Jewish person. And she said she would get more auditions by appropriating that name, right? right. You hear it all the time. There's, what's that one girl, Rachel Dozal, who was a white girl, I mean, white parents, <laughs> white as, you know, Mitt Romney in a snowstorm. White, I mean white, and, but she had dark hair and she said she was black. She And in this culture, that's bad. Right. But in God's culture, that's a good thing. Yeah. You appropriate, that's right. we take upon the identity yeah. of what Jesus did yeah. for us. We take it upon ourselves, yeah. right? Yeah. So it says, we don't, we're, the reason we're sick and weak and anemic and, and, and sometimes die is because we haven't realized we just take upon the identity. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, right? Yes, yes. So if you're brokenhearted, take upon yes. the joy of the Lord. Yes. Appropriate. Yes. What he, he already did it. Everything that Jesus did yes. on the cross, he already did it. He's not going to do it again. Yes. It's up right. to you to right. appropriate, Woo! to receive oh, the identity yes. of who he is. And that's who you are. You are who he says you are. Right. Well, you just don't know what I've been through. It doesn't matter. God, right. is, God is the healer. I'm yes. sick. Yeah. No, you're not. Jesus, Jehovah Rapha, you appropriate the healing power of Jesus upon your life, in your life. You need victory. He's the victorious one. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So the difference is we can appropriate what he did on the cross. And in the world, it's a bad thing. But in, in, the, in the church, in Christ, take upon him, take upon him, his identity, and who he says you are. Amen? Okay, let's stand now. Let's take. Now I'll read it. 1 Corinthians 11, uh, 20.
3. For I received, this is the Apostle Paul saying, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance and appropriation of me. Take the bread. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do often as you this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Take the cup. For as often as you do it, as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show you are showing yes. the world I'm not defeated. Hallelujah. I'm yes. victorious. Yes. I'm not sick. Mm -hmm. I'm healed. Yes, yes. Come on. That's right. That's right. I'm broken before God, yes. but I'm lifted yes. up in his yes. power and his yes. might. In yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Father, we thank you for your power and your victory on the cross. Yes. Without the cross, we have nothing. We are nothing. Right. But because of the cross, Lord, we have healing. <laughs> you have touched us. We have victory. We have power over sickness, over disease, over over poverty, over everything that has come against us. We think that we can appropriate right now, take upon ourselves and take upon the identity of the one who has defeated the world. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Off the time. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Well, take your seats one more time. Amen. And we're going to get ready to receive this morning's tithing offering. Um, if you need a tithing or offering envelope, amen, just raise your hand. Our brothers will be more than happy to serve you today. And uh, Livingstone Family Church, let's give a warm hand of praise to the Lord for all of our guests that are here with us. Amen. Hallelujah. We welcome you to church this morning. Amen. And we pray and believe that your life and your heart will be transformed and changed like never before. Amen. Well, we want to thank you in advance, amen, for your donations, for your giving, and most of all, just your obedience to the Lord this morning. Amen. And um, we want to remind you, amen, a few announcements. Uh, we want to remind you we have prayer service tomorrow evening at 7. And uh, we also have our Wednesday night midweek service. Amen. Come on back. Uh, pastor's continuing his series. And uh, we know that you'll be blessed. Amen. Um, coming and joining us again. Amen. On Wednesday. And uh, hearing that powerful word of the Lord. Amen. And uh, we also want to remind the men of God that on Saturday morning, on the 12th at 9.30, yes. uh, you will be having a men's breakfast. Yes. Amen. So come on out. Amen. We're going to have it here um, in the church. Uh, we'll have food. We'll have coffee. We'll have some juice. Amen. And most of all, we'll have the bread of life, which is the, the word yes. of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. So come sharpen one another, uplift one another, encourage each other. Amen. And know that God will bless you in doing yes. so. Amen. So again, thank you, our online viewers. Amen. Thank you for your giving, your continual support. Thank you that you continue to stay faithful. Amen. To God first. Amen. To your family. Amen. Your spouses if you're married. Amen. And to your local church. Amen. If you're saved, you want to be in the house of God. Amen. If you're a believer, you want to be in church. Amen. And so we commend you today, amen, and we just want to bless your seed, we want to bless, amen, your time here with us, it's not in vain, amen, anytime you're in the house of God, it's not in vain, and you know, I can hear some, some cynics saying, well, I can have God anywhere, I can have him in my house, I can have him in my prayer closet, and yes, you can, but the word of God says to not forsake the assembling of one another, so we can't take pieces and parts of the scripture and leave others out. Amen. As a believer, we need to incorporate every portion of God's word into our lives. It's a daily growing. Amen. It's a daily development. And so we believe with all our hearts. Amen. Your pastor and I believe truly and wholeheartedly that when you put God first, you want to be in his house with his people. Sharpening each other, encouraging one another, hearing the word of God together. Amen. There is power in numbers. And remember this, that yes, God is everywhere. But God does not manifest himself everywhere. There are only certain opportunities and places where God will manifest his power. Where he will literally touch you, impact you, change you, transform you. And that doesn't just happen anywhere. Because God is sovereign. 
God is holy. And when we are in his house, his holiness is here and his yes. holiness can fall upon us. If you're watching us and you aren't physically able to be with us here in this local assembly, then we pray and believe that God's anointing and his power will run through those wavelengths and touch you this morning as well. Amen. Let's pray for your seat. Father, we thank you and we honor you, Lord. We honor you with our giving this morning, Father God. We don't want to be thieves this morning. We don't want to rob you of what rightfully is yours already, Lord. So the 10%, your word says, is already yours. It was yours before we even received it. So this morning, Father God, we want to honor you and we want to say here, here it is back to you, Lord. Because as we are faithful in the little, you will entrust us to be that stewards of even greater things, Father God. So this morning, we submit ourselves to you and we submit this seed, Father, by faith that you will replenish, you will restore, and you will sustain that which we still have. In the name above every name, yes. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen, church. Yes. Come on up this morning and give cheerfully to the Lord. God bless you. How many know this morning that the Lord will never leave us and he will never forsake us? Amen. No matter what you're faced in life, have never faced a battle and a struggle in life. And the enemy sometimes will tell you that God's not with you. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God is with you. Even in the fire, even in the furnace. No matter what comes in your life, Jesus will never let you go.
comes with the word of the Lord. Amen. The Sanchez family who just recently um, lost Christina. Amen. Sister Christina yes. Yes. lost um, her aunt uh, just maybe a day or so ago. Um, her aunt's name was Yolanda Garza. And so we want to make sure, amen, and maybe some of you know of loved ones, maybe friends, amen, that maybe um, you have lost personally as well, amen. We pray for you, amen. We lift you up, amen. And uh, know that um, you have a church, amen, Sanchez family, everyone here. You have believers that are standing in the gap for you, that are trusting, amen, for God to strengthen, to comfort, amen, and by all means to take us through, amen. My pastor has said, and many have heard sometimes he doesn't remove the storm but he takes us through the storm amen so this morning amen know that you we are praying for you in the name of jesus with us now pastor mark Monday. god bless you church amen. Amen. amen thank you for staying appreciate that and you know as we said earlier we all go through storms and through trials but the lord will never let us go he'll always be there if you call on his name amen. that's all you have to do is call on the name of Jesus Amen. and he will answer you and he will comfort you. And we're praying for the Sanchez family, yes, yes. praying for our sister Christina, her Thea who went to be with the Lord on yesterday and also kind of bittersweet, but also it was our sister's birthday, sister Christina and uh, birthday on yesterday as well, the same day. And so, you know, a lot of things in life we don't understand. We don't understand why things happen the way they do. But one thing we do know is God will never leave us. Amen. He'll never let us go. And so I pray today that you feel that comfort. You feel that strength. And know that you're not in this battle by yourself. You're not fighting these trials and tribulations in your own power. Listen, if we get it in our own power, we'd all mess up. We'd all fail. If we try this in our own power, we can't do it in our own power and our own strength. Amen. But we can do it by the help and the yeah. grace yeah. of the Lord Jesus Christ. you believe that, church? Yeah. Our little ones can be dismissed this morning. Uh, we do have class available for our children. And uh, we thank you for visiting with us. If you are with us here for the first time, we, we welcome you and we pray that this will not be the last time. I can't, you know, I know one thing that, you know, we believe in the word of God and we preach the truth of God's word. And Amen. you're in a safe house today, let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, God has put us here together and uh, so let's embrace this moment Amen. let's thank God that everything happens for a reason amen church amen. you could have been anywhere this morning you could have been at Cornerstone at your home you could have been at work today you could have been making money you could have done anything That's right. but we chose together God yes. allowed us together to be in the house of the Lord amen, amen. amen. Hallelujah. so we welcome you today my name is Pastor Mark Mata. Amen. And I'm so excited that you're with us here at Livingstone Family Church. Can we stand to our feet this Sunday morning? And, um, and we have a good time so far. Amen. Good to hear all the different people of God minister in our church. And just been having a good time this morning. And now let's get into the Word. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the Gospel of St. Mark. The Gospel of Mark, of St. Mark. Chapter number 10 and verse 46. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. When you have it, say amen, amen in the house of the Lord. If you're on your way, say I'm on the way. If you're not even trying, just say I'm already there on the screen, Pastor. I'm already there on the screen. I can see on the screen. Amen. All right. Mark 10, 46. Now they came to Jericho. And as he went out, talking about Jesus, of Jericho with his disciples, that a great multitude was with them. Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. Verse 47. And as he sat by the road begging, he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. And he began to cry out and said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then many warned him to keep quiet. But he cried out all the more and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still 
and commanded him to be called. And when they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise. Hallelujah. He is calling you. Yes. Mama, mama, mama. Amen. And he threw aside his garment or his coat. And he rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What do you want me to do for you? Good, yes. How many would like Jesus to ask yes. you that question this morning? Amen. What do you want me to do yes. for you? Yes. And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, I, our teacher, that I may receive my sight. Mm. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Amen. Can somebody give God praise for the word of God this morning? You know, Lord put this word in my heart as I was just meditating all week and asking God, what would you have me to share to your precious, precious beloved people this Sunday morning? And I felt this word in my heart that God today is going to help us church how to fight through the crowd. You know, some of you are going through a crowd. I'm not talking about a physical multitude of people necessarily but some of you are going through a crowd called sickness some of you are fighting the crowd of affliction some of you are fighting the crowd of lack of debt some of you are fighting the crowd of brokenness sorrow shame depression there's a whole lot of things all of us in this room and watching us by Facebook we're, we got a crowd there's things that are pushing us to the right, to the left. There are things that are the enemy's thrown at us that he's telling us we're not going to get to our destiny. We're not going to get to our future. But the devil is alive. Yeah. We got the victory this morning, church. Yeah. And we're going to learn how to fight. Yeah. We're going to learn how to fight. Amen. We're going to learn how to fight through the crowd. Remain standing. Let's pray. Lord, we love you so much. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives in us. Oh, God, we thank you for the enabling power of your spirit. We pray, oh, God, today that we do no violence to your holy word, that you would just anoint us afresh, God, to deliver this word, God, that you laid in our heart, Lord, for your precious people. And I pray that we do no violence to the holy scriptures of God today. And that, Lord, you receive this morning the glory, the honor, and the praise in every heart and every life. Lord, we pray that you confirm your word this morning with signs following. Yes. Yes. God, that you do what only you can do by way of the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And Lord, we cancel every assignment of the enemy. We declare that every plan of darkness is, is defeated and that, Lord, you are Lord over all. We praise you and we honor you in the mighty and the holy name of your son, Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. 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 You really see the thank you, praise, and worship team. Amen. I'm going to talk this morning on the subject of, of how to fight through that crowd, how to fight through that trouble, how to fight through those battles that you're facing in your life. You know, somebody once said that it's better to walk alone. It's really better to walk alone than to be in a crowd going in the wrong direction. Right, right. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I want to go in the direction of God. I want to flow with the will of God and the plan of God for my very life. Amen. You see, it doesn't it doesn't take much to follow the crowd. Yeah. Anybody can follow a crowd. Amen. But what takes real courage is to stand for what is right, Come sometimes on. even all by yourself. Yeah. 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 Amen. You know, I've learned in life. That if you don't fit in, you don't fit in with that group. You don't fit in with that crowd. You don't fit in with what everybody else is saying is right. And you know in your spirit it's wrong. When you don't fit in, it's because you're probably doing something right. Yes. yes. Mm, I'm going to try that again. Amen. If you're not fitting in with the status quo, you're not fitting in with certain family members that don't go to church. Certainly family members that don't want you to grow in the Lord. Right now. Certain family members that call you to the party, but they don't call you for prayer. Ooh. Then you're probably, 
you're probably on the right track. Yes. Amen. You're probably doing the right thing. Amen. Yes, yes. And you're learning how to fight through the crowd. Amen. You know, Albert Einstein once said these words, and I quote, he said, the one who follows the crowd will usually get no further than the crowd. Yeah. He went on to say that the one, the one who walks alone, he said, is likely to find himself in places that no one has ever been. Come on. Yes, yes. See, no one ever got to the top church mm -hmm. by blending in, yeah. by following the crowd. Amen. Most of the time, you get lost yeah. when you're in a crowd. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. See, a strong man, a strong woman of God doesn't follow the crowd, even though they come against them. Yes, sir. Amen. That's right. Here we find in this story, it's mentioned three times, three different times in the other synoptic gospels. We find it in Matthew. It's mentioned in Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 around there and following. And then we also find this story told in Luke chapter 18. And then we also find in our text today, mentioned this story in Mark chapter 10. And here we find the story of when Jesus and his disciples have entered Jericho, but now they're on their way out. Mm. And as they're exiting Jericho, they're on their way to Jerusalem. And the Bible said that a large crowd of people, a crowd, multitude of people, began to follow Jesus and his disciples as they are exiting the city of Jericho. Now follow the story. As they're exiting the city of Jericho with a large mass of people, a crowd, a multitude. Hmm. Bible says that a blind man who was a beggar by the road, by the highway, one translation says that he was just begging for money as his custom. But he began to hear that Jesus was passing down the road. Right. Yeah. He began to hear that yeah. Jesus was approaching yeah. Yeah. his location. Yeah. Yeah. He began yeah. to hear uh -huh. the word of faith. He began oh. to hear the word of healing. Yeah. He began to hear the word of transformation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm. And he rose up out of his spirit. Come on. And he began to lift up his voice and he shouted to God yeah. 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 as he heard Jesus passing by. Yes. Come on. And he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Amen. I want to tell you, church, this morning. I want to tell somebody this morning. You may not see it, but you can hear it. Jesus is passing by this morning. Hallelujah. We don't have to see Jesus to feel Jesus. We don't have to see Jesus. To hear Jesus. The man was blind. The man had a disadvantage in his physical eyesight. But he heard Jesus passing by. Glory to God. Oh, I feel the presence of Jesus this morning. I feel Jesus passing by. You didn't come to church by accident. Oh, hallelujah. We've had testimonies after testimonies. Of people saying there's something about this church. Yes, yes. It ain't the biggest church. We don't have the largest crowd, but Jesus is passing by. Yes. The presence of Jesus is passing by. Yes. And he didn't say those words by happenstance. He knew what he was saying. Mm -hmm. By him saying, Jesus, son of David. Yes. He didn't say son of Joseph. Uh -huh. He didn't say that Jesus was just from any other heritage or lineage. But he said, you are the son of David, which was the lineage that led to the Messiah. In other words, he realized, Jesus, you are the blind man healer. You are the way, you are the truth, you are the life. When he was saying, Jesus, son of David, he was saying, you are the Messiah. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. And as he lifted up his voice, yes. mm. the crowd says, shh, 
Come on, Pastor. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. As he lifted up his voice, yes. church people got angry. Yeah. Religious people got angry. Wow. They said, be quiet. Mm -hmm. You don't act like that in church. You, be, you behave yourself. You don't, you don't get on fire for Jesus. Okay. You're supposed to be a casual, conservative, quiet believer. Uh -huh. Don't make no noise in church. Uh -huh. Who do you think you are? Wow. How many know that there's some churches that if you ever lift up your hands, they would think you need something? <laughs> yeah. They'd have a heart attack if you said, Hallelujah. There's some churches that won't allow you to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Don't act like that. Don't you know we're back? Oh, I better watch myself. Uh, Don't you know we're Presbyterian? Uh, Don't you know we're Lutherans? Yeah. Don't you know we're Baptists? Mm -hmm. Don't you know you don't act like that in church? But ladies and gentlemen, when you need a miracle, yes. when you need God to touch your life, when you need God to open up a door that no one can close, you don't care what anybody says. You're going to bless the Lord at all times. And His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Amen. When He was saying, Jesus, you're the Son of David, He was saying, you're the Messiah. You're my God. You're my Lord. You're my Savior. You're my Redeemer. You follow me, church. Amen. His name was Bartimaeus. Came from the son of Timaeus. And your Bible says that he would sit there and he would beg. But he began to shout. In the Greek, it means that he shouted over and over and over again. In the Greek, it is a repetitive shout. In the Greek, it is a continual shout. Oh, my, my, my. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't stop praising him just because you don't get your breakthrough overnight. Right, right. Most of the time, you don't get your breakthrough with one shout. Right. Most of the time, you don't get your breakthrough with one praise. Most of the time, you don't get what you need to get from God with just one hallelujah. You got to keep saying hallelujah. You got to keep coming to church. You got to keep praising God. You got to keep reading. They say most people that buy a book never go beyond the second chapter. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's like a lot of people. Here we are in the second month of the year now, mm -hmm. February. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most people now put away their resolutions. Right. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if I can keep going to the gym. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know if I can keep going to Planet Fitness. Yeah. I don't know if I can keep going to Gold's Gym. I don't know if I can keep, you know, Pastor said, didn't even mention too much about 21 day fast this year. Well, I'm still fasting. Amen. Praise yes. God. Yes. Man, I can't, I can't give up too much now. You know, I don't want to go overboard with this fasting thing. I don't want to go overboard with this walking with God thing. Right. Huh. And that's for most people. They just get stuck in a rut. Yeah. Most people just want God a little bit in their lives. Mm -hmm. Most people just want to say I'm a Christian and they're okay with that. Yeah. Right. But then there's others. Like blind Bartimaeus. Yes. I got to keep shouting. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I got to keep yeah. lifting up my hands. I got to keep giving God praise. I got to come back to church on Wednesday. I got to come back to church yeah. next Sunday. Yeah. I got to get, get in the deep trenches yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. And fight the good fight of faith. That's right. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, church, we're in a fight. Yeah. We're in a battle. So we can't stop with one praise. Yes, we can't stop with one service. Wow, right. We can't stop with one devotional. Amen. We got to keep digging deeper Amen. and receive everything that God has for us. Amen. Yes, Thank you, Lord. He didn't stop praising the Lord in the Greek. It implies that it was a repetitive cry. Yeah. Yeah. An over and over cry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And as these people got angry, they said, be quiet. Now, how many know blind Bartimaeus? He could have stopped right there yeah. and followed the crowd. Right? Mm -hmm. right. He could have stopped right there mm -hmm. and said, okay, yeah, I, I, I know. I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm a little too extreme here. Yeah. You know, I, I, I went a little too far here in my walk with God. Mm -hmm. What if he would have stopped right there? Mm -hmm. What if he would have listened to his in-laws? I mean, that don't know the Lord. What? You know, don't be doing too much for Jesus. Come on. Uh, 
<laughs> Why do you go in the church so much? Put a church in church in church in church. <laughs> Yeah. What if he would have listened to his friends? Oh, man. Nobody's serving the Lord. Yeah. I was going to go to church, but I got high. But I got high. But I got high. <laughs> Come on, let's smoke up. Let's vapor up. Yeah. You don't need to go to church. What if you and I would have listened to the crowd this morning, the spirit of the enemy that said, just stay under the covers. Don't get in the shower. Don't brush your teeth. Don't get that coffee brewing. Don't iron that shirt. Come on, somebody. Don't take that coat to the cleaners. Just sleep in. You need your rest. You know, you've been working hard all week. Yeah, I might have been working hard, but the reason I got a job is because my God opened up a door where there seemed to be. church. Come on. Yeah, yeah. My, 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 my. Amen. I'm not going to take advantage of my job. My job didn't, didn't, didn't bless me. God's the one that blessed yeah, me. Yeah. Glory right. to God. Make it plain. Right. Yes. He didn't listen to the crowd. Mm. They said, be quiet. Mm. He could have sat there and said, yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I, whew, what was I thinking? <laughs> I'm a beggar. Oh. Mm. I, I mean, uh -huh. this is my life right here. Mm -hmm. Come on. I'm going to be in poverty all my life. He could have believed the lie of the enemy that says his current situation was his destiny. Mm. Right. Right up. But he didn't believe what he was going through Amen. was his final destiny. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good. He shot it all the Lord. He lifted up his voice and said, I don't think so. You ain't in my shoes, baby. You want to be a beggar? Go ahead, be a beggar. But I'm tired of being a beggar. I've been called by God to lend and not borrow. Come on, somebody. I'm tired of borrowing from my Thea. I'm tired of, 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 of living off of food stamps. I'm tired of living in poverty. I'm tired of shooting up and taking this medicine all the time. I'm tired of the begging lifestyle. I want healing. I want deliverance. I want freedom. I want prosperity. I want abundance. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You got to get tired. You got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. How many of y'all are sick and tired of being sick and tired? Now, he raised up his voice. And when he raised up his voice, Jesus stopped. Mm -hmm. can imagine they were walking. Yeah. Headed to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Jesus heard a cry that was going to take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. right. He heard a cry that was going to be repetitive. And it wasn't going away. Come on. He heard a cry that was even getting stronger. Amen. More intense. Well, he cranked it up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Look at somebody and tell them every now and then you need to crank it up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You, you, you just need to crank it up a little bit. Yes, yeah. <laughs> crank it up. Crank it up. Y'all doing okay? That's good. And they cranked it up. Yeah. He cranked up his voice. Hmm. Lifted up the projection of his volume and he turned it up. Turned up the knots. Come on. Hmm. Glory to God. Amen. And Jesus stopped. Go get him. He, could, he tells somebody in the crowd, maybe his disciples, those closest to him, he says, you go tell him that I'm calling him. Right, right. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, hmm. when you keep praising Come God, on. when you don't give up, yeah. when you don't go in the towel, yeah. when you Lord. keep persevering until the end, yeah. Jesus will stop and he'll call you by your name. He'll reach out to you and he'll ask you, what do you want me to do for you? Amen. We got any Bible believers in the house this morning? Amen. Yes. If you're a Bible believer and you believe in the word of faith and you believe in God, all you have to do is tell your friends that don't believe in God. All you got to do is tell your loved ones that don't have that level of faith that you're at. All you got to do is tell them, Jesus is calling you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning 
to let somebody know Jesus is calling you. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. Hallelujah. But God's been dealing with you all week long. He's been speaking to you. He's telling you, I love you. Yes. I have a plan. I have a purpose for your life. Yes. I'm calling you out of darkness. Yes. You don't belong in that nightclub scene anymore. Yes. You don't belong in that dark area anymore. Right. You don't belong, amen, living the way you've been living in lack and poverty and shortage and unbelief. You don't belong and live, need to live like a beggar anymore. God is calling you out yes, he is. of Egypt. Yes. And he wants to bring you into the promised land. God's calling you out of darkness yes, Lord. and wants to bring you into the marvelous, glorious yes, light Lord. of Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He's calling you today. You may think you're talking about me. That's what Gideon said. Uh -huh. Gideon said, you got the wrong man. No, I'm talking to you. You're a mighty man of war. Yes. God knows who he's calling. Amen. And he calls them through these people. He said, Jesus wants you. Come on. And when he gets close to Jesus, I'm sure he's nervous. I'm sure he's scared. I'm, I'm sure he's not 100% sure of how this conversation is going to go. But he, he talks to Jesus. Looks, They make eye contact. Finally, Jesus and the blind Bartimaeus, they make eye contact. And your Bible says that he asked them the question, the million dollar question of life. The question that we all would love Jesus to ask us. What do you want me to do for you? God loves us so much. He's not mad at us. He's madly in love with us. You know what God is saying today? What can I do for you? If your heart's right and your motive's pure and you really want Jesus in your heart and life, God's asking us today. What do you want me to do for you? Come on. Amen. <clears throat> What's pressing yes. in your heart today? What's the strongest passion that you have? God says, I want to help you with that. Amen. What's the thing that's causing you to lose sleep at night? I want to help you with that. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Is that sickness seemingly overcoming you? Does it seem like you're never going to get healed? I can help you with that. Amen. Yes. That's right. Amen. Are you always struggling from paycheck to paycheck, mm. week after week, mm. wondering how you're going to pay your bills? I want to help you with that. Yes, yes. Right. I can show you that I'm your source of provision. Yeah. That even when you don't get a break, I'll always make a way where there seems to be no way. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody in this room that can relate to what I'm talking about? You've had some bad breaks in life. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Lost some hours at work. Mm. Fighting a sickness that doesn't want to go away. Listen, when you got a sickness, don't say, I'm sick trying to get healed. Say, I'm healed trying to get sickness out of my body. Yeah. Yeah. Don't say, I'm sick trying to get healed. Say, I'm healed already. And I'm trying to just get the symptoms out. You got to change your perspective. Right. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. Million dollar question. He looked at straight in the eye of Jesus and he said that I, teacher, he calls him Rabbi I first, teacher, a form of respect, teacher, Rabbi I, that I might receive my sight. Amen. Yes. My I hear love. Uh -huh. I hear mercy. Come on. I hear grace, but I want to see it. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. He had enough sense to recognize it wasn't a it wasn't a, a shot of disrespect. I don't have the time to teach you that, but it was a it was a shot of respect. Mm -hmm. It was a shot a shot of endearment. And, and and when he responded, he wasn't being selfish and wanted just to see. He he more than likely Bible scholars tell us that it is believed that this blind Bartimaeus was had sight before. He wasn't born blind. Okay. It is believed that maybe for many, many years he could see. Wow. But maybe he got in an accident. Mm. Maybe a sickness came to his eyes and his retina and his pupils that he couldn't 
understand. Maybe it was a generational curse that came upon his life. We don't know what happened. And we don't know how many years he was blind. But we know one thing. Bible scholars tell us he was at one time able to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He did have at one time 20-20 vision. He did at one time was able to not need glasses and not be able to see or not be able to have any help or any assistance in his viewing and his seeing. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he said, Jesus, I want to see. Amen. And Jesus looked at him and he said, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Look at that. Thank you. Putting it on the screen. Verse 15. Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you whole or well. I'll tell you what that means in the Greek. Just a minute. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. I think it's so so. Yeah, no. So so. In the Greek, you know what it means? To be made well physically, yes. mentally, mm. and spiritually. Amen. He said, You got it all. Amen. You just didn't get physically healed. Mm. Your spirit got saved. Amen. It is the same word that God tells us. That he wants us to be made whole in our spirit, in our mind, right. and in our body. Yes. Don't just settle for your spirit to be healed. Right. Mm -hmm. Believe God for your body to be yes. healed. Amen. And don't just settle for your body physically to be healed. Right. Believe God that you'll be stable emotionally, mentally. Yes. That's what it means. So so means to be made whole mm. spiritually. Mentally and spiritually. Yeah. Now, hmm. Jesus told him, go your way. Yeah. But he said, no, I'm going your way. Hallelujah. I'm not just going my way. Mm -hmm. I'm going your way. Mm. You know what God is looking at today, church? Hmm. How are we going to respond once he gives us what we ask him for? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's good. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. yes. I know some people... Mm -hmm. God did a miracle in their life. They still can't wake up and go to church yep, on Sunday. Yep, yep, yep. That's right. That's true. They should be in prison walls today. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They should be behind incarcerated. They still can't get up and give God praise yep. on Sunday. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Amen. Right. 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 True. They're going their way. Yep. That's right. They still haven't been changed mm. to say, God, I'm going to. You know what? We believe historians tell us that this blind Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, ended up being a passionate, ardent, close, fervent follower and disciple of Jesus Christ after that. Amen. And he walked with him all the days of his life. Some even believe he was there in the upper room when the Holy Spirit came down on the 120 that were gathered there. They believe blind Bartimaeus was present. See, he just didn't get healed and say, thank you, Lord, I can live his own life. He said, God, thank you for changing my life. I want to be a disciple. I want to grow in the image and the likeness of Jesus. Does the miracle that God gives you, has it changed your life? Mm. That's right. That's right. Yep. Has God ever done a miracle in your life? Hallelujah. Yes. Anybody ever seen God do a miracle yes. in your life? Yes. You know why? That's what the Holy Ghost said. That's why some of you are here right now. Because God did a miracle for you just right. yesterday. Yeah. Just this weekend, God did yes. a miracle for you. Yes. I'm a living witness. Mm -hmm. I didn't know when, I would, if anytime soon, I was going to go back to work. And they told me, out of work for three weeks, they told me, is it alright if we pay you for all the time that you were out? <laughs> is that alright? And I didn't even have the legitimate time. But they said, if you just sign that little form, we'll help you out. Man. We're going to help you. Yeah. And that's what God has done for some of you today. Yeah. God has helped you. Yeah. Right. So he went back, he honors God, serves the Lord, and his life will never ever be the same again. As I told you earlier, this story is mentioned in Matthew and it's mentioned in Luke. 
Matthew, see if we can find this. Matthew 9, 27, if I'm not mistaken. Matthew 9, 27 tells us something a little bit interesting, a little curveball. All right. Luke mentions one blind Bartimaeus. And uh, so does Mark. But notice what Matthew says in his account. And Jesus departed from there to, what? Mm. I thought we were talking about just one blind man. Mm. Two blind men followed him, crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy. I'm not going to take the time to read that whole story, but basically it's the same narrative. Basically it's the same story. The only difference is he mentions two blind men, Matthew, not Mark and not Luke. Mark only, in fact, Mark mentions the name. Why? Why? Do we have a seemingly contradiction of stories? Well, it wasn't a contradiction. There were two people. There were at least two men that were blind that got healed besides Bartimaeus. Well, why do we mention that? Only one is named, though. And in that text, go home and read the story in Matthew 9. You read that story, it never mentions about a name. But in Mark 10, it specifically identifies the man that was blind, that changed, yeah, that's it. that said, I'm going to follow Jesus wow. Wow. That's good. and not just be chasing after a miracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's good. That's good. Mm. I believe that's why he was noted. Mm. Mm. He was singled out yeah. by Mark because Mark said, that's a real disciple yes. right there. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know what happened to the other one. Mm -hmm. Not saying that he didn't serve the Lord. We don't know exactly. Mm -hmm. But we know for sure. Mm -hmm. Hmm, Bartimaeus yes. said, yes. I'm going to follow Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Let me tell you something. Amen. Yeah. Let me tell you something. God knows those that are his. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was discouraged one time. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, where are your people? Where are your body of believers? Where's your church, God? Even in the time of pandemic, of COVID-19, a couple of years ago when it began, I said, Lord, where are your people? Why are we afraid of a sickness? When your word says, by your stripes, we are healed. Why are we staying home from a sickness? When your word says that you're the God that forgives us of all of our iniquities, and heals me of all my diseases. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying COVID-19 isn't real. Mm -hmm. Some of you in this room got affected by it. Yeah. I think in all, and, I, and every one of us in this room here today, many of you watching by Facebook, mm -hmm. but don't make that an excuse That's right. Amen. that I'm not going to be connected to God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. God doesn't teach social distancing. Yes. Nope. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's right. God says, come. Yes. And do not forsake yes. the assembly yes. of ourselves. Right. I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry, I gotta hurry. Amen. How do we fight the crowd? Thank God! Blind Bartimaeus didn't let the crowd stop him from getting his miracle and following Jesus. Don't let whatever crowd, sickness, trouble, disease, financial weight, family crises, whatever the case may be. I don't know what your crowd is, mm -hmm. but don't let that crowd stop you from your miracle Amen. Amen. and following Jesus. Yeah. Here's how we do it. I noticed five things real quick. I'm going to hit them real quick. I noticed five things that blind Bartimaeus did that changed his life, that changed his situation. If you write these down and apply them in your life, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get victory. Amen. And you're going to fight through that crowd. Amen. And you're going to cross that mountain. Yeah. And you're going to get the overcoming power that God wants you to have. Number one, what do we find in our text? The Bible says that his whole life was normal. It, it, it was going to be just a normal day until he heard. Yeah. Amen. Number one, yeah. he heard. We'll give you some words that start with the letter H. All the letter H. Number one, he heard. Somebody say he heard. He heard. He heard the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Romans 10, 17. Faith comes or begins. It initiates by hearing. Yeah. And hearing the word of God. Amen. Look at that again. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Nothing is going to change in your life. Nothing is going to uh, uh, turn around in your life for good until you hear the yes. word of faith. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Until you hear, I don't have to live like a beggar anymore. Mm. Until you hear that you're the head and not the tail above only and not beneath. Well, Amen. Amen. Nothing will change in your life until you hear the word of God. Why do you think we preach the word of God so strong here in this church every Sunday, every Wednesday? Why do we bring you the word of God? We're not trying to tickle your ears. You don't need your ears to be tickled. You need your heart to be changed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. So number one, he heard the word of God. When you hear that word of faith, that you don't have to live in poverty. You don't have to live in depression. Right, 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 right. You don't have to live as a beggar. And that's going to prepare you and propel you for change. Hmm. So number one, I saw that he heard the word of God. Yes. Somebody once said that blindness cuts you off from things. Hmm. It's true. When you're blind physically, you can't see. You can't see everything. But deafness says cuts you off from people. Mm. Yeah. When you can't hear and you're not able to see people. That's why he said, man, I got to do something. I got to do something with this voice of faith that I'm hearing. I got to do something with this voice of healing that I'm hearing. So we heard the word of God. Number two, he hollered. He hollered. He shouted. Yeah. Hallelujah. He hollered to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalm 66, verse 1, real quick. Psalm 66, verse 1. And as I said earlier, it wasn't a shout of disrespect. Right. It was a shout of honor. Because look what it says in... Psalm 66, 1. Make a joyful shout unto God. Yeah. All the earth. Let's read on. A couple more verses. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. And then verse 3. And say to God, how awesome are your works. Though your greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. Amen. 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 See, when you shout to Jesus, it's saying, I'm not taking it anymore. Yeah. All the enemy's been defeated. Yeah. Yeah. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Yeah. Shout unto God with the voice of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 See, when you shout to God, you're saying, devil, you can't win anymore. Right. When you shout to Jesus, you say, devil, sickness, disease, you're not my final word. Amen. Right. Right. So number one, you heard the word of faith. Number two, he hollered to Jesus. Number three, he went a little higher in his praise. When they told him to be quiet, he just raised it up a notch. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is where some of us missed it right here. Right. We've heard the word of faith. Yeah. We know by the stripes of Jesus we're healed. Right. And we believe that. And then we go a step further. We start giving God praise for it. Thank you, Lord. You are my healer. Right. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Amen. We give him praise and glory for that. But then when the people start getting on our nerves, we're like, oh, maybe this, is, maybe this isn't for me. <laughs> I didn't know my Thea was going to get all upset about me. I didn't know people were going to stop giving me money because I'm going to church now. All right, now. Can I tell you what happened to me? When I got saved, all my all the people, my family, my loved ones, my theos, my theos, you know what? They they didn't want like they didn't like Mark anymore. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. Because yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, they loved me more when I was in the world. Yeah. 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 You got some loved ones like that? Uh -huh. yeah. They love you more when you're in the world. Oh, Just yeah. don't go to church, man. Don't hang out with you. Yeah. yeah. Just don't come back to this place. Twenty seven forty eight. Guess what? You'll be cool with them. Come on. <laughs> So you got to get out your praise. You're going to take it higher or you're going to go lower? Come on. I said, you're going to go higher or you're going to go yeah. lower? Yeah. Somebody shout, I'm going higher. Come on, somebody shout a little more. Somebody clap them a little bit more. Oh, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Freedom, freedom, freedom. I think I'm going to clap a little bit longer now. I think I'm going to shout a little bit longer now. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. You got to raise it up a notch. 
if you want to get what God wants you to get, you got to live in that life of more than a conqueror. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Amen. See, that blind Bartimaeus started to pump faith in him. Mm. Right. I'm a conqueror. I don't have to live like this anymore. Yeah, Pastor, mm -hmm. yes. But the people in the crowd telling me, oh, yes, you are. Mm. Who do you think you are? Yeah. <laughs> You're always going to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Oh, <laughs> he couldn't believe that lie. Wow. Right. Uh -huh. But he took it up a notch. Right. And said, no, I'm not a conqueror. I'm not a conqueror. Mm -hmm. I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. Amen. I know what more than a conqueror is, right? <laughs> it's when the wife doesn't have to go to work. And the man doesn't know who, he does all the work. And he says, honey, got paid today. And she catches that. And she goes to Macy's and J.C. Penney's. Guess what? He's a conqueror. But she's more than a conqueror. I wish I had a witness in that. Hallelujah. Amen. Do I got time for two more points? Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Super Bowl's not till next week, right? Right. <laughs> At the Pro Bowl. Yeah, we don't win over here. See, you need to see yourself more than a beggar. Yes. 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 Sir. You need to see yourself more than a conqueror. Yes. Right. 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 Yeah. Mm. You need to see yourself living above average. Mm -hmm. Amen. Two more things that he did. Blind Bartimaeus. Bible says that when they came to him, remember I told you, and we read it earlier, when they came and told him, Jesus is calling you. Mm. You got Jesus' attention. Right. I can imagine they were dumbfounded. They were the people of the crowd, the same crowd that was telling them to be quiet. Now they got to go back and tell him he wants you. Yeah. That's why you never need to put down somebody that don't look churchy. That's right. Amen. Don't ever put down somebody that walks into church. They smell like alcohol because they might smell like alcohol right now. That's but right. when God cleans them up, when yeah. God baptizes them, yeah. in the Holy Ghost, my God. Yeah. they're going to be the next John the Baptist. They're going to be the next Peter. They're going to be the next Paul. They're going to they're going to be a world shaker and a history maker. Yeah. Yeah. The same people that you say be quiet are the very ones that are going to see receive the miracle yeah. of God. And they had to break their pride and say, Jesus is calling you. <laughs> I mean, I didn't see it, but he saw it. <laughs> I don't see nothing good coming out of Nazareth. Uh, I don't see nothing coming out of the east side. Yeah, yeah. WW White, all right, I guess. Come on to church. Yeah. <laughs> you live on the south side? I guess. <laughs> you live on the north side? Come on, it don't matter what side, as long as you're on the side of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. And they call him, and notice what they said. I'm going to read it. Back to Mark 10. Mark 10, the Bible says when they brought him right to, to the presence of Jesus, that uh, they told him, be of good cheer. Verse 49. 10, 49. All right. Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called. And then they called the blind man. Look at what he said. Notice what that crowd said to them. Be of good cheer and rise for he's calling you. Right, right. Now what does that tell us? It tells us that he probably was down and discouraged. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. He probably was not very happy because even though you praise the Lord and you shout and you take it to the next night, sometimes there's a, there's a thought in the back of your mind, is this really the right thing? Yeah. yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. I mean, am I really on the right? Anybody ever been there? Yes. Sir. You're at church on Sunday. Yes, sir. Mm. Look at yourself, son. I made it. Yeah. I made it. Yes, I made it. yes. But you're like, did I really do the right thing? Mm. I mean, I don't see no significant change in my life. I don't see no significant change. I, he's still blind. Mm. He hasn't received his sight yet. Mm. Can you still come to church when your miracle hasn't happened? Come on, come on. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Can you still come to church blind? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good. He's probably second guessing. He's down. They said, be a good cheer. Get happy. And number four mm -hmm. is a very important key. If you're going to fight the crowd and get your miracle, follow Jesus, you're going to have to get happy. Yes. Yes. He got happy. Yes. He, he made himself happy. Yes. 
He did, amen. When they told him to be of good cheer, he said, this is going to be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Get excited about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many know that life can change when you change your attitude? Amen. Amen. When you change your attitude, it changes everything. Yeah, right. yes. He got happy. They told him, be of good cheer. You're on the right track. God's going to do this thing for you. God's going to heal you. God, God, I mean, they, they're trying to pump faith in him and encourage him. That's what I came to do. Yes. I'm trying to let you know that what you're going through is not the end of the chapter. Amen. It's not the end of the book. Come on, somebody. That's right. What God has been doing in your life, it's going to happen. What God's been speaking to you, it's going to happen. What God's been telling you, it's going to happen in Jesus' name. He got happy. Get yourself happy. Praise God. Amen. Whatever you're fighting, yes. here's what I learned. Whatever I'm fighting right now, it could be worse. Yes, That's right. That's right. Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Amen. It really could be worse. Yes, That's right. Think Amen. about it. Yes, sir. Your sickness could be worse. It could have left you totally, de totally dependent on medicine, totally dependent on whatever doctors, physicians. Mm -hmm. But it could be worse. Yes. It could be worse. All right, you're not eating it like you're supposed to. And you, you know you can't eat the T-bone steak, but thank God you can you can you, you can you can get some chicken noodle soup. <laughs> I know it's not what you want. I know it's not the Bible I thought with just yet. <laughs> but thank God you got some corn tortillas. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I know you don't got everything in the fridge that you want, but thank God you got something in the fridge. Yeah. Amen. 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 So get yourself happy. And then finally, you know what I noticed? He responded in hope. Mm -hmm. He responded in hope. That's good. Man, now, can you please put up 50, verse 50. Mark 10, verse 50. I'm going to close with this. I'm going to try to close. I'm on my conclusion right now. Hmm. But I got 100 conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> so watch this now. He hadn't gotten healed yet. He hadn't received his sight yet. He got himself happy now. They told him to cheer up. And by the way, the Bible says that in this world we will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Right, right. Yeah. I have overcome the world. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> Sometimes God's just waiting for your attitude to change mm. so he can deliver you. Come yeah. on. Come on. Come on. We want God to deliver us, but God says, change your attitude, and then maybe I'll deliver you. Right, right. Mm -hmm. He got happy, got excited. And then what did he do? He threw aside his garment. Yes. Hmm. He threw aside his garment. And he arose. Hmm. And he came to Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Let's just picture for a moment. I'm blind, Bartimaeus. And I got my nice beggar's coat. You're going to help me with this illustration? Thank you. I love y'all. Ed and Eddie. Y'all always ready at any time. That's right. What did your Bible say he, he did? He threw his garment. Why did he throw his garment? Number one. That's right. You're preaching my soul. Get your own sermon on the <laughs> Why did he throw his garment? Because back then, if you were a beggar, that was your uniform. Amen. That was letting everybody know he was at a disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah. He was handicapped. Mm -hmm. He had an issue. Mm -hmm. So when he put on that coat, it was saying, I'm a beggar. Look at me. I'm a, it was called a beggar's coat. It's like when a police officer puts on his uniform. You know a police officer is on duty when you see him in. You ever seen somebody at the hospital? Ever gone to the hospital as a patient? At Crystal Santa Rosa? At Baptist? And all you got to do is look for somebody in scrubs. Yeah. <laughs> You don't even know what department they're working at. Right. Uh, but you see them and scrub. Oh, can you please tell me where do I where, where this 
Where is the pediatric tent? Can you please tell me yeah. where this place is that you go visit someone? You don't even know where they work at. But you see them in scrubs. That coat identified him that he was a beggar. When he put on his scrub coat, everybody knew he's a beggar. Labeled him. And you know what they would do as a beggar with that coat? Can I have my coat back? <laughs> you know what he did? Can you give me that table? Anybody able to give me that, that table, that communion table? I was going to tell y'all to leave it. I'm going to leave it there before y'all took it, but y'all so good. You got it there, Brother Eddie? Yes, sir. All right. You just put it right there in the middle, right there so we hit that camera. Amen. Sure. That's good. Yeah, face of the camera like we did earlier. This is what they did. If you were a beggar back then, like Bartimaeus, you know what you did? You took off your coat during the day. This is what they did during the day. They took off their coat and they put it on the road in the street. Pretend this is the ground. Since I took my coat to the cleaners, I didn't want to put it on the ground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gotta take care of your stuff. That's right. Amen. Yes, sir. So, they would get back, sit on that road, sit on that highway, Anybody got some coins? Anybody got a nickel, a quarter, a dollar? How about a credit card? Anybody got some change? No, we don't even do that anymore, do we? How about a dollar bill? You better got a dollar. I promise I'll give it back. I promise. Oh, thank you, sir. I promise I'll give it back to you. We'll give it back. Okay. I promise. Woo! A quarter. And when people came and felt sorry for him. That beggar, you know what they do? Give them coins. Yeah, yeah. This is what I study. I'm telling the truth. I'm not making this up. They use their garment, that uniform, that identification coat that said he was a beggar. Yeah. During the day, people took coins and coins and coins and coins. Mm -hmm. It's like the people do today when they're on the street corner. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they want your food or they, they want money, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them, they're making more money than you at work. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I am a man of my word, brother, and I'm going to give you back your <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hello, Crazy Book Fan. Let's give a little praise. Come on. Yeah. I'm almost done. Y'all give me five more minutes? Yeah. I'm going to give me five more minutes. Raise your hands. Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. I got a whole hour. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm just kidding. And then the weather starts to change at night, right? Temperatures drop. Did y'all handle the temperature dropping? Oh, yes. Amen. They made me go to work during those days. Praise. <laughs> Some of y'all got off. Y'all, thank God they let you on. They told me, you get to work. I said, all right. I said, okay. Can you hold my microphone, Brother Eddie? <laughs> now it's nighttime. Remember, I'm blind by the maze. Yes, sir. <laughs> I was like that for three weeks. Let me tell you, I would, I would go to bed with chills and shaking, and, and my teeth were gnashing. I was thanking God I'm not going to hell. Praise God. Because the Bible says when you go to hell, they're going to gnash you. Your teeth are going to be gnashing. Yeah. By the way, that's what they're doing in hell right now. Anybody that's in hell, they're like this. And that's the way I was for three weeks. <laughs> you know I'm multi-talented. You do it, brother. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> now you can leave the table there. Well, yeah, okay, go ahead. Since you got the energy to do it. I was going to let you do it, but since you did it. At night, beggars would put their jacket on mm. to warm their bodies. Mm -hmm. So when he said, Jesus called him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he threw his garment. Yeah. <laughs> He's supposed to catch it. That's okay, you can pay for my next cleaners. He said, I don't need that jacket anymore. Yeah. Now, I need my jacket, but I don't need that jacket anymore, he said. Hallelujah. I love you, brother. Yes, sir. 
All right, you can take it. That's okay. I don't need it no more. Praise God. Somebody give God praise. So I don't need it no more. I'm not a beggar no more. What did he do? He exercised his faith. I can't see right now, but I don't need that jacket no more. I don't, I don't need to clothe myself in that at night because I'm going home. I said, I'm not living on the bridge anymore. I'm not living on the highway anymore. I'm not living on 410 underpath anymore. Come on, somebody. I'm going home. I'm going back to my wife. I'm going back to my family. I'm going back to my children. I don't need that jacket anymore at night to come for me under the bridge. I've been healed. I'm going to get touched by God. I'm going to get delivered. Come on, somebody. I'm not what the enemy says I am. I'm going to fight the crowd. Stand to your feet. I'm done. John Joy, this morning's message. My, 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 my. You got to fight through the crowd. As I said earlier, I don't know what your crowd is. It might be literally people coming against you. But it might be a sickness that's saying you're never going to get healed. It might be a financial status that says you're never going to get beyond. You're always going to be borrowing. The Bible says that I'm the lender. And not the borrower. Let me tell you something. I've seen two sides of the coin. I've been a borrower and I've been a lender. And this better be the lender, let me tell you. It's a whole lot better. Being able to give and not even have to worry about even getting back. Because you've already seen God work in your life. I want to ask this morning, just you don't have to raise your hand, but anybody either right now has it or you used to have it or you're planning on getting one. Anybody ever have a Ford vehicle? Yeah. Amen. Anybody? Anybody yeah. driving one right, right now? Okay. Anybody used to have a Ford? Yeah. Right now they didn't tell me before I bought my first Ford what it stands for. <laughs> Fix or repair daily. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I had a reliable Ford. <laughs> Amen. Henry Ford. True story, the founder of the Ford Motor Company had already built the first automobile, but he had a new idea. He had a creative idea about building a new, improved engine. Had never been built before. I'll tell you what it is in just a moment. But for now, he started thinking of plans of, man, this would be a great, great improvement to the automobiles as they were named. By the way, did you know that the first automobile didn't even have a reverse gear? Mm. Did you know that? <laughs> because we're destined not to go back. We're destined to go forward. Yeah. You might have to use that reverse to back up a little bit to get you out so you can get back on the way forward. Mm. But don't you stay too long driving backward. My God, you can get a wreck. Yeah. So, he called some of his friends that helped him with the first automobile and said, look, I got this idea, this incredible plan, this creative idea of building this new engine. Can you draw me up some uh, plans? And so they drew up some plans for him and they said, and after he saw it, he said, all right, I want you to go take it to these engineers. Go take it to some professional engineers and tell them to build me that kind of engine. All right. So those guys, after they drew the plans, they went to the engineer, true story. And they went back to the engineers, and the engineers nodded their head. That this is not gonna work. They laughed at the plans. They mocked the plans. They said, now you might have built the first automobile, but this is impossible. This will never work, they told him. You go tell, you go tell Mr. Ford it's not gonna work. They went back, the men that gave them the drawing plans to the engineers, they went back to Mr. Ford and they said, they say it's not going to work. They go, no, take it back to them. It's going to work. Amen. Don't give up. Amen. He said, are you sure, Mr. Ford? Because they're telling us this doesn't make no sense. It's not going to happen. 
Long story short, they would go back and forth, back and forth. Each time the engineer said, impossible, can't be done. And each time Mr. Ford said, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. He was fighting the crowd. He was fighting the critics. And he said, that's not the final word. Yes, sir. You go and you, you find a way to make that engine, discover that engine and make it big and make it strong. Six months went by. Guess what? No results. Nothing. Still, Mr. Ford, don't give up. Don't stop until you find the, a cure, find an answer, and you get that engine developed. All right. Six months later, still no new developments. Nothing looked impossible. Finally, the year went over. Shortly after about a year or so, guess what those people went back to Henry Ford and drew the plans and gave it to the engineers. He said, guess what? They discovered how to build a V8 engine. And there we have history. The V8 engine was built because somebody fought the crowd. You're here this morning. You don't even know what's on the other side. I know some people have said, no, it'll never happen to you. But you don't have to listen to them. But I'm Bartimaeus. Felt something different that day. How many of this morning can feel something different today? You feel faith rising. You feel hope rising. You feel expectation rising. You feel in your spirit, I don't know, it don't make sense, but all things are possible to them that believe. And if you're driving, if you're driving a vehicle with a V8 engine, it's because somebody fought the crowd. Somebody did the up. Every head got me, eyes closed. Father, I thank you today. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Father, I pray right now for your precious people. Lord, that faith would ignite in their spirit. That hope would rise up. That expectation would come alive in their spirit even right now. Holy Spirit, we pray, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. We're going to fight the crowd. We're going to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Like blind Bartimaeus, we're not giving up, Lord. Like blind Bartimaeus, we've heard your word of faith. We know by your stripes we can be healed. We know that you are our needs supplied according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus our Lord. So right now, Lord, as we lift our hands to the Lord, we receive our sight. Come on. Let that spiritual blindness leave your life. Come on, open the eyes of your heart right now. Come on, your dream is going to happen. Your vision, and you're gonna, you're gonna write, find the right partner. I felt that today. Some of you are believing for the right date, the right husband, the right wife to come into your life. And you're single today. Just call that in. Come on, just call it in. Call in the right relationships. Call in the right connections. Call in the right partnership. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I don't know what your crowd is.
sit, stretch your hands, these precious people. And we're going to begin to pray. And you're going to get through this crowd. You're going to get through this storm. You're going to get through this battle. You're going to get through this struggle right now that has showed up in your life. Because you can do all things. I said you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Now let's pray together. Say after me. Say, Lord, I love you. Come on, say it again. Say, Lord, I love you. And I know this very moment you are calling me because you love me. I thank you, God. And because you love me, I can love you better. Lord, I need your help. I need your power to fight through the crowd. To fight through the trouble. To fight whatever's coming against me. Open the eyes of my heart. Like blind Bartimaeus. That I might see. But Lord, I want to follow you. All the days of my life. To the world, to the flesh, and to the devil. And I say yes to your will and your way. In Jesus' name. Now just let me pray for you real quick. Come on, sing it again, sister. In Jesus' name. It's all over you, Miss Jenny, in the name of Jesus. Ah!
completely. You don't have to take off your shirt or your jacket. Especially if you're not wearing a jacket, leave your, leave your clothes on, praise God. But symbolically, this is what I want you to do. Follow me. When I say three, on the count of three, you can put the lights on so they see me. Amen. I want you to go like this. Now, this is what we do. This is a practice. But when I say three, when I say three, you throw that garment away. Symbolically, the garment of trouble, the garment of begging, the garment of poverty, the garment of lack, the garment of sickness and affliction, the garment of COVID, the garment of that fear, that surgery. Throw away that fear, throw away that garment. All right, so let's practice. I'm going to go like this. When I say three, you're going to let it go. Now don't go like this and try to hold on to it. Once you let it go out of your hand, baby, don't pick it back up. Don't be an Indian giver. Amen? Are y'all ready? Help me out, Brother Josh, with some symbols. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate Brother Joshua. Y'all still got your garment up? Yeah. We're going to throw it away. We're going to give it up. We're going to throw it. Yeah. It's not going to be a hindrance anymore. Ready? One. Something on that base drum.
that this morning. Amen. Don't let the devil take away your prayer. Let's go with our blessing. Father God, we thank you. Let's lift our hands before we go home. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done this morning. Keep us safe. Let us have a blessed lunch, fellowship with our brothers and sisters and family. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, that the crowds are going to stop us. Trouble, sickness, disease is not going to stop us. Poverty, lack, shortage, begging is not who we are anymore. We are overcomers. And we're going to follow Jesus. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. May he give you peace all the days of your life. And remember, church, as we go home, that God loves you. And we love you. And Jesus is Lord. God bless you.